Okay, so uh, what I have right now is um, I've opened a page in Sibelius. And what I want to do is I want to basically demonstrate to you what uh, these codes are and how they are built. Um, and then also we'll look at uh, what exactly we mean by invasions of codes and, um, and how do we actually notate these invasions so i hope you guys can see my 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 workspace here in sibelius now one of the things that you notice is what i have actually is um is a basically a piano roll uh, so that has a treble clef and that has a bass clef so like i said i will basically start with just one stuff so i will be writing these chords uh either in the treble clef only or i'll write them uh, in the bass clef only okay okay so now uh one of the things that you will notice about um, uh, tonal music is basically there is a tendency of or most of the chords that you will hear in tonal music are always built with the root and the third above the root uh, in terms of the interval, right? And also the, um, uh, the fifth interval above the root or you can also think of it as the third interval above the middle note that you have and and also the chords that we're going to be looking at mostly are uh, either going to be major chords or they're going to be minor chords and what determine whether the chord is a major chord or a minor chord is basically the interval between the root of the chord and the third above it okay so let me take a very good example of a C triad so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to write my first the root of this of the c triad on the line for middle c so um i expect you guys to know what a middle c is at this point in your music theory lessons so if i take a middle c uh like this and i hope you guys can actually hear the sound as well so that's my middle c and because i want to build a a, a c triad uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the third above C. So how do I actually know what is the third above C? Or what's the third interval above C now? Um, basically, what you're basically doing is counting the third note from C in the music alphabet. So if C is your first note, if you're going to take C as your first note, the second note above C would be a D, and the third note above C would be an E. So on the music stuff, uh, the E would be this line here. So if I add this E, what I now have is the third interval above uh, C. And then what I want to do is to add the fifth interval from the root again. So my root is C here. And the fifth interval would be the fifth note from C. So if, if C is the first note, D the second, then E, then F, and then G is the fifth note. So that is my fifth note. So now what I have here is actually a, a, a C triad. Now, how do I actually know that this is a major triad or this is a, a, a minor triad, like we have said? Now, the interval between the root of the chord, which is this C, and the E is what will tell us whether this chord is a major chord or is a minor chord. And like, a, like um, and, and, and in terms of the intervals themselves, a major chord will have what we what is called a major third interval between the, the root and the third above it. And if it's a minor chord, the interval would, would be what we call a minor third. Now, there are certain things that also, um, information that I would expect you guys to know about intervals, but I'll just mention them to you guys. Now, um, what is a major third and what is a minor third? That is possibly one of the questions that some of you guys might be having at this point. Now, a major third interval, uh, if you want to think of it in terms of the number of semitones, uh, the semitones in a major third interval are four semitones. And then if it's a minor third, the number of, in, of, of semitones will be, um, will be uh, three semitones. So if you go on the piano and look and check the distance between this C and this E, 
what you would get in terms of semitones is four semitones. So therefore that makes this chord a major chord. And this chord is actually in its root position. And why do we call this root position? Uh, the, the reason why it's called root position is basically because we have a C or the root of the chord as the bottom note. So the note that is playing at the right at the bottom is what we call the root of the chord. Now, I can also rearrange this C chord um, instead of start, starting with a C at the bottom, I can start with an E, right? Which was that, you know, the third interval above the root. I can actually start to notate the E. And then I'll go to the fifth above the root, the G. And then the root of the chord, which was this C, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it right here at the top. So that's an, that is another space for C that we have in the treble clap. So if I write this at the top, now what I have here is a first inversion of the C chord, right? I'll write these for you guys and also I will give you a worksheet for these inversions at the end of the lessons. So I will uh, put um, a link in the description box for you guys to be able to download these worksheets. Right, so we have a root position here and then what we have here is a first inversion of the C major chord, right? Basically the notes are still the same here, but I'm just starting the chord with the E, which is the third or the second note in this uh, chord. Now I can also do the same thing. Instead of starting with the E, I can actually start with the G of the chord and notate the C above and then this E I can notate it right at the top. And what I will have now is what is called a second inversion of this chord, right? So let me just um, uh, let me just put uh, some uh, label so that you guys can follow what I'm actually doing here. Okay, so I need to find plain text. Yeah. Okay, let me try this. So here, this is, okay, uh, this is not working, sorry. Um, so this is the root position. Let me see if I can do this. If I go to text and uh, so let's say text. Uh, yeah, so let's say small text here. So like I said, this is the root uh, position. I'll just say root here. And the second one, I'll just copy this and paste it here so that I can edit. Now, this second one, we call this the first invasion of, uh, of this C chord. So what I have here is this first invasion. And the second, the third uh, one here is the second inversion right so we call this the second inversion okay so root position uh is basically when the chord which is being notated starts with uh with the root of the chord right in this case that's the c and when we start with the third above the root in this case what we have now is the first invasion if I start with this, uh, the, th uh, the third note or the fifth from the root, what I have is called the second inversion. And also uh, one thing that is very important is if a chord is a major chord, like we said, we can have these chords as a major chord or we can have them as a minor chord. If it is a major chord, the interval between the C or the root and the third above it should be four semitones. So that that is what define um, a root position. And then if it's, uh, if it is a, so that is what defined a major chord. If it is a minor chord, what will, what you will have here is um, three semitones if you check on, on the piano, right? So some of these things, some of this uh, information, I'm not going to go back to them because I expect you guys to actually know your piano roll at this point it's very important that you actually know the piano roll and know where the c is know where the d is and know uh, how to calculate uh, the number of semitones between uh these 
uh, between these nodes, right? So for example, now if I, if I was going to have the same sort of structure, I'd start with a C and maybe have an E flat and then have a G at the top here. Now, I still have a C, E, G, but it is actually a C flat. But what I have now here is the distance between C and E flat is actually three semitones. So therefore, that is a minor third interval. So if I have a minor third interval, uh, automatically this chord becomes a minor triad, right? And one of the things that maybe I should have mentioned is uh, if these notes, uh, basically if the chord has three notes and and the notes are built based on root, third, and fifth interval, we actually call uh, this this chord um, um, sorry yeah we call this uh, what is it I was saying <laughs> okay so we, we call it if you say if it's a root and the third we actually call it a triad sorry that is what I was trying to say so basically we have a triad which is basically a chord that is built based on the root the third and the fifth from the root okay so this is what we mean uh, uh, when we refer to root position, first inversion, second inversion. So now what I want to do is I want to show you um, the figure base. Uh, how do we notate these chords as figured bases? Now figured bases is basically uh, a shorthand that is used in, 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 in classical music a lot. Right, and then I will then talk about how do we actually also uh, notate these as commercial chords. How do we write a major chord? How do we write a minor chord? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the number of intervals and I will write them. I'm going to write them right here at the bottom. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it uh, as I'll be doing it. Okay, right, so I have... Um, uh, basically, I also want to play these chords for you so that you can actually hear that it's pretty much the same chord, but with just, you know, whether it's a first and very second, but the difference is really, really the, uh, small. So here I'm going to notate that C minor chord, but starting now with the third, which is that E flat, then the G. Then the C now is at the top. Then I'll write it again as a second inversion. So starting with the G the C and I'll write the E flat here at the top. All right, so I want you to listen to how this chord sound um, from the first chord as root position, first inversion, second inversion, and then we move on to the minor chords again, root position. So second, first inversion, second inversion. So, so that is your root position, first invasion, and second invasion so pretty much they sound almost the same and here's your minor and your first invasion and your second invasion okay right okay so this is pretty much uh, all you need to know about root position first invasion and second invasion now with these uh, triads what I want to do now is to write the figured base of each of these. So let's start with the root position, right? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to count the number of semi, not semi, the interval distance between the root and the third above it and that, and then we write it down and then we do the same thing. So the root, which is C to E, the interval there is a third interval and the root to um, to the top knot is um, fifth interval. So what we're going to do is we're going to write five, and then below the five, we're going to write a three here, right? So that five, three, uh, the three at the bottom, basically saying that the distance from C to E is a third interval, and then the distance, the, the distance, sorry, from C to G is a fifth interval. So we're going to use a five three for now to show the um, or to represent this chord. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the first inversion, but now with the first inversion, what you will have is actually a six three. Right? I will come back to this and we'll count these together. I'll just write 
uh, I'll just write the same for for the second inversion. Now, what you have for the second inversion is a six four um, number, right? So let's look at the first inversion. Now, if I count the interval between E and G, that's E. F, G, that's a third, so that's why we have a three at the bottom. And then from the third, four, this space here, five, the line, and then six is the space where the knot is, so that's why we have a six, three, okay? And then the second inversion, uh, if, you, if I counted the interval from the G to the C, that's one, the space two, the line three, and the space four. So that's why we have a four at the bottom. And then if I continue from the four, the line will be a five. And the space where the, the last knot is, is six. So that gives us a six, four. So these are basically the three standard notations that we have for, um, I mean, the figured base for root position, first inversion, second inversion. But what we do now is we basically reduce this to a, to a smaller value or to a shorthand again. So root position, instead of actually writing the whole 5, 3, now if a chord is in root position, if we're going to write it as a figured best, we basically reduce this to nothing. So if you see a chord written without any figured best to it, basically that chord is root position. Now the 6, 3, which was the first inversion, we then reduce this to just a 6, right so six will is 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 the shorthand for six three which basically refers to the first invasion of this triad and then six four we don't reduce so we write it in full as six four right to show us um uh, a second inversion chord. So normally, in when we write this in context of music analysis, now if I'm writing my music in the key of C and I have these chords, now because C is the first chord in my um, in, in 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 the key of C, so C is the first chord. So what will happen here is, uh, all right. So let's get the texts, right, so I'm going to write for you in terms of analysis. So now when we analyze, because C is the first chord, so what you have is you have the room, the Roman numeral one uh, to show you that this is, um, a for, uh, 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 this is the first chord. Now, if you don't have any number, you know, that is being carried by this one, basically what it means is this chord is root position like again i'll give you worksheets so that you guys can can refer back to this and study right now the same if i want to write this as roman numeral with a figured base to show a first invasion what's going to happen is you have that one uh it looks something like this Right, so you have your one with a six right at the top here. So that basically is showing you that this one is should be notated in first inversion. So the full of this will be actually be a six three, right? And um, the six four will also be similar. We will have a one somewhere, something like this. And then the six four will be written um, to show you that this chord is a second invasion chord. Okay, so uh, this is basically all the information that uh, you guys need to understand um, uh, in terms of the figured best uh, um, notation and root position chords, first invasion chords, and second invasion chords. Now, with, uh, with our uh, commercial chords so this is basically referring to even music like jazz music or contemporary music what they do is they just use uh, capital letters to represent a major chord and they use a capital letter followed by a lowercase m to to or sometimes a minus minus sign to show you that this chord is in the minor form so what i mean is so this c chord if i was going to have it as uh as a chord symbol, right? Because it's a C and it's a major chord, I will have it as a C like this, right? And if it is root position, I'll just write it as a C. And normally with chord symbols, they don't um, 
tell you whether you should write this or there is no sort of like a standard notation to show whether the code is first inversion or second inversion, right? Um, but now what we will do to actually show the inversions is to use what is called slash codes, right? So what? how does this uh, slash code work? So let's go to the first, because this is the root position, it starts with a C, so we just write this as a C. Now, if I'm going to write this as a code symbol, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the note that is in the base, and the note in the base or the note that is playing in the lower part of this code is an E. So I will then notate this code as C over E. So the first chord or the first letter is showing me that the chord in itself is actually a C major chord slash E, and E is saying that the E is what I should be having in the base, right? And if I was going to do the same thing for the second inversion, I would still have the C, but now it would be slash uh, G, because the G is what I'm having in the base. Okay, so C over E is first inversion, the first letter is basically showing you that this is a C chord, right? And in this case, a C major chord, slash. The second letter is saying that E is what should be in the base. And in this case, again, what should be in the base is a G. Now, if I move on to the minor chords, the notation in terms of um, Roman numeral is exactly the same thing with um, this, but now it changes in terms of whether... You, um, it changes basically in terms of the case that I used. Now, remember, I used uh, a, a, an uppercase for major chords. Now, for minor chords, what will happen here is this first chord in a minor key will be written again as one, but it should, should be written in this lower case, right? And then um, the you know the the first inversion will have a six. Just like this in the second invasion we'll have a six four now with the chord symbols now there are two ways of doing this right i'll just pass this here now you can have the this c chord with a smaller m or lowercase m to show you that this is a minor chord right or sometimes what will happen is you will get a dash sign here uh written or after the, this, so you have it like this, right? Uh, I'm just gonna outline this. So it's either C M, right, or C dash. Now, when we move on to the inversions, it's going pretty much the same. So it can be C M slash. Now the note in the best at this point is an E flat. So slash E flat for first inversion. And for second invasion, what you're going to have is CM slash G, right? So basically here, uh, what I have is a second invasion of a C minor chord, right? So this is um, uh, the information that you guys need to have um, as far as major chords and minor chords are, uh, are concerned and they are invasions, okay? Okay, so before I move on to um, the work that I want you guys to complete before I actually discuss that with you guys, I've just thought of uh, revisiting a very important uh, uh, topic um, that I think um, if you guys have a good grasp of it, you'll be able to understand a lot of these things that are going to come after this. And this is basically the, the issue of key signatures, the order of sharps, the order of flats, and how you can actually tell what key you are working with based on a given key signature, whether the key signature is actually using shops, whether the key signature is using flats. I mean, often I'm asked by students that how do you know what key you are in when you're given a key signature? I mean, so we're going to look at several ways of dealing with that. Um, and eventually when you work with a lot of music, you realize that it will become very easy to tell um, what key you're working with just by looking at the key signature. So what I want to do is I'm going to start with um, what I call an order of sharps. Now with the order of sharps here, 
uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze keys that uses shops. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in a form of a table. So I will have key, the key that I am in, and then the number of shops that it has, and then so on. And then at the end of the day, we're going to go back to the key signatures and discuss a few other things there. Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here with actually the key of C. Now, as you all know that in the major scale of C, we actually don't have any shops or any flats. So I'm going to put a dash there. Um, so if you have a notebook, please copy this table as I'm doing it, or you can always refer back to this video, but that's very important for you to understand how I'm going about creating this table. Right, so I've started with the key of, with the key of C and we don't have any shop in the major scale of C. So we're gonna put a dash there and then we're gonna move um, to another key, but how I'm going to use, how I'm going to get this key is what I'm going to do is in the major scale of C, I'm going to locate the fifth knot. So you know your major scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So the fifth knot in the major scale of C, if you count that C, D, E, F, G. So G is the fifth knot. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the key of G, right? Now, if you create the major scale of G using the tone, tone, um, semitone, then tone, 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 and then another semitone. So this is stuff that um, you probably have done when you did music theory uh, in grade one. So if you create the major scale of G, what you actually notice, what you will notice is that G has one sharp, and that one sharp is going to be an F sharp, right? So I'm just gonna write F sharp here as the one sharp in the major scale of G. Now. The next key that I'm going to do is again, I'm going to move to the fifth note in the major scale of G. So if I count and remember, this F sharp is part of the G major because what it is, is basically in the major scale of G, all the other notes are natural notes. So they are like A, B, C, D, except an F, which will be an F sharp. So if I count now the fifth note, I should take note of this. So the fifth note in the major scale of G would be G, A, B, C, D. And D is the fifth note. So I'm going to put a D here and I'm going to come here and um, write the number of sharps that D has. Now, remember, um, also, if you did, um, D major scale was probably one of the keys that you did in grade one to five. And what you notice that what you notice there is that D has two sharps and the sharps are F sharp. Right. And. Uh, another sharp which is uh, C sharp right so those are the two sharps that we have in the major scale of D I'm going to do this quick uh, very quickly so that we can get through to the next part of this lesson now if I move to the fifth note in the major scale of D if I count that's D E F sharp because F sharp is part is, is written here on the uh, part of for D so if I count the fifth note from D that will be D E F sharp G, A, so I get to an A, so let me put an A there, and from your previous mu music theory, you notice that A had three sharps, which was F sharp, um, C sharp, and a new sharp, which was uh, G sharp, right? And then also um, the other key that you did um, uh, was the key of, uh, E. So what I'm going to do again from A is I'll count the fifth note from A, which is A, B, C sharp, D, E. So I'll get to an E. So I'm going to put E here as the key. And if I create the E major scale, what I'll get, uh, basically uh, I'll get um, four sharps. And the four sharps are F sharp, C sharp, and uh, G sharp, and the last sharp is basically D sharp, right? Okay, so now these are the keys that you probably did from grade one to grade five, but what we're going to do is we're going to build on these uh, four different keys that uses sharps. But before we actually do that, what I want to do is I just want to do a quick analysis of what I have here. So remember what we were doing with the keys is we started with the key of C and then we went to a fifth above C, which was G and a fifth above D, uh, G, which was D and then A and E. And what we noticed was basically if we, if we analyze this is if G had one sharp, which was F sharp, when I moved to the fifth scale knot, 
which is D from G, the F sharp that was in G will be also in the D major scale with an addition of a new sharp. In this case, that is a C sharp. And then to the new key, the two sharps in this previous key are going to be found here again, but with an addition of another sharp, in this case, that is a G sharp. And then with E major, uh, major scale, the three sharps in the previous key are there again with an addition of D sharp. But also what I want to do quickly uh, is to analyze the distance or the interval distance between these sharps. Now from F sharp to C sharp, if I count the number of just letters that are included from F sharp to C sharp, so you start with F, G, A, B, C. So that of the basically five letters there. Now from C sharp to this G sharp here, uh, the number of letters that are included are C, D, E, F, G. So it's five again. And then from G to D, at this point, it's G, A, B, C, D. So again, it's five. So as I increase with fifth intervals here, the number of sharps is also increasing in fifth intervals, which basically means is I can actually build, uh, I can continue with this uh, table just using this uh, uh, formula, so which means the fifth note in the major scale of E, if I count this E, F sharp, in this case, because it's found in the major scale of E, so it's E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B. So I'm gonna write B as my new key here. Now, the next thing that I know automatically is these four sharps are going to be in, in the key of B, and with an addition of a new sharp. Now remember what we then noticed is the new sharp is also going to be a fifth from D. So if I count from D, what is what I'll get is D, E, F, G, A. So I'm gonna get an A here, but I'll put a sharp because I'm dealing with sharps here. And then let's move on to the fifth scale note from B. So it's B, C sharp, D sharp, E and then F sharp. So the fifth note from B is an F sharp because B here had an F sharp. So the fifth note here comes an F sharp. And what I'll do is, again, I'm going to copy all those five sharps with an addition of a new sharp, which we're going to find out. Uh, so F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp, the D sharp, an A sharp, and then the U sharp will be the fifth scale degree from A sharp. So A, B, C, D, E. So I'm gonna write this as an E sharp. And then I'll do the same thing. The fifth note from F sharp will be F, G, A, B, C, C sharp. So I'll write a C sharp here, right? And all the, five, the six uh, sharps in this previous key will be found again here. So F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, and the last one will be the fifth from E, which is E, F, G, A, B. So I'm gonna get a B. Now the moment I will get to seven notes, excluding the C, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The moment I get to the seventh key here, I won't be able to continue because that is basically the end of the keys that uses sharps. So basically what I have now is the order of sharps and the keys that use. So basically G has an F sharp in its major scale. D will have an F sharp and a C sharp. A will have F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp, and so on. Right, so therefore, that will get us to what we call the order of sharps. So our order of sharps will therefore be F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, and E and B sharp. And if you want to quickly remember this order of sharps, what you're going to do is to use uh, this phrase, Father Charles goes down and ends battle. So that will help you to remember the order of sharps, which is Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this order of sharps. Again, I'm just going to write it down because I'm going to refer back to it. So Father Charles, sorry, goes down 
and ends Bertram. So Father Charles goes down and ends Bertram. I'm just going to copy this, right? Now, I'm going to move here. So I've created already some key signatures, but I haven't labeled them. So obviously, we have our table here with the keys and the number of shops. So what I'm going to do is I want to see how I can use that order of sharp. Um, let me just write it down here again um, at the top so that you guys can see what's happening. Uh, so I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the, the text font here, something like right. So and I'll just make it bold and italic. Right. So let's write that further again. Charles goes down and ends battle. So this is our order of shops. Now, so I've got keys, um, key signatures here. As you know, these are key signatures in both the treble clef and the bass clef. And how do I actually use the order of sharps to know what major key, I mean, what key rather uses these sharps, right? Um, so let's get it. So as you know, that if we don't have uh, anything on the key signature, the key that you will be, uh, that will be in is basically the key of C major. So I'm just going to write C major here quickly, right? So I'm in the key of C major in the first key signature here. Now let's move on to the, f the next one here. Uh, we want to see how do we use, so I've got one sharp here. So if you want to know the key that uses one sharp, so there's a little trick that you can use to start with and that will help you a lot in actually knowing what key you are in. So you, what you can introduce, if there's one sharp, right, on the key signature, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the first sharp, right? And then once you, once you get to the first sharp, which is F sharp in this case. So basically that one sharp automatically be this first sharp, which is F sharp. And you're going to move two steps from F sharp. So F to C and C to G. So G, not G sharp now. So G major would be the key that has one sharp in its major scale. So what I've done here is I noticed that I had a one sharp and I went to the first sharp, then I moved two steps forward, which is one, two, and I landed on G sharp. But then I will take just the G here as the key. Now, so this is basically a little uh, formula that you can use, you know, to, there's so many ways that you can, there's so many ways that you can follow to get this, but this is probably one of the easiest. So let's go to two sharps. So I have two sharps here. So I'll count the two sharps. So where the second sharp is, which is C sharp, then I'll move two steps forward, which is one, two, and I'll get to D sharp. So therefore, D major would be the key that uses uh, two sharps, right? Uh, we do the same thing. Let's do the same thing for three sharps. So the three sharps here is one, two, three. Okay. Then I also move two steps forward, which is one, two. And I'll get to an A sharp. So therefore, A major is the key that uses four sharps. So that will work again for your for three sharps. So that'll work for your four sharps. That'll work for, that will also work for your five sharps. Now when you get to six sharps, right? Um, what you're going to notice is actually uh, remember we're just taking the key without the sharps. When you get to the sixth sharp, sixth sharp, at this point, um, our sixth sharp is the E sharp. And then you move one step to B sharp. But you still need to move another step, the second step. But we don't have anything here. So what we do is we go back to the beginning. So one and then two, we'll go back to F. But now the F sharp, we can't take just F on its own because this F sharp is included in the number of sharps that we have in this key. So therefore, we write this key as actually F sharp, right, instead of just F. 
right so I just write F sharp there right you see that um, so it was different for example with two sharps so when we counted two sharps and we noticed that they if we move two steps from the second sharp we'll get to D sharp but that D you see that D is not part of these uh, old you know the it's not part of the two sharps that we had initially so that's why we take it we took it as a as, as a D natural okay so the last key signature here is one two three four five six seven so one two three four five six seven is B sharp so we need to move two steps so first step we'll go back to F sharp and the second step we'll go to C sharp and then we take this key as C sharp right like this okay so C sharp would be the key with seven sharps let's just quickly do the four sharps and the five sharps so four sharps is one one two three four and then what I'll do is I'll move two sharps which is one two right so from this letter which is um, E right so E is the key but if I look back from where I came from I didn't have an E right so what I have basically what I'll how I'll write it is basically in terms of E natural not on only not E sharp so the key that has uh, four sharps in this case would be an E major right and then we'll do the same thing for uh, five sharps so five sharps is one two three four five it's a then we go two steps one two then what I'll do is the key that is there is, is B so B major would be the key that uses five sharps so this is basically um the order of sharps and how to use the order of sharps to actually know what key you're dealing with and um you know so another thing is now once you know the key that you're dealing with if you're asked to if you want to write the major scale so let's say you want to write the major scale of d right so what you would know here is d will have two sharps and the sharps from the order of sharps will be f sharp and C sharp. So all the notes in the major scale of D would be natural except F, which would be an F sharp, and a C, which would be a C sharp. Right. I hope this is quite clear. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment and then I will try to to answer this, or probably I'll do another video. So I'm gonna close this and I'll come back quickly with the order of floods and the key signatures that are involved in the order of floods. Okay, so I'm back again. Now, what I want to do is just to quickly go through the order of flats. I'm not going to go through the whole long process. What I've done is I've, I've already created for you the order of flats. Maybe just a quick overview of what we have here now as we started again with the key of C without any flats, as you know. But instead of moving in fifth intervals like we did with the order of shops, with the order of flats, we go in fourth intervals. So the fourth and uh, not in the major scale of C will be an F and then the flat that you get there will be a B flat and then you go to the fourth not in the major scale of F and that will give you a B flat if you create a B flat major scale you will get B flat and E flat as accidentals so that will give you all these flats uh, which I would want you to probably pause this video and copy this uh, in your notebook so that you can refer back to the table and uh, so the order of flats that we have eventually will be B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, and F flat. And you can use the reverse of the order of sharps, which is battle ends and down goes Charles's father. So that gives us our order of flats. Okay, now with the key signatures, um, so I'm going to edit now these names. So the key that uses one flat is F and two flats, that will be B flat and three flats um, will be an E flat, four flats that will be an A flat, and five flats that will be a D flat, and six flats that will be a um, G flat, and seven flats that will be a C flat. Okay. So these are the keys that we have um, that we use 
flats. And just maybe to quickly look at how do we use the order of flats. So for example, you don't know, you're not sure um, which key has two flats or which key has four flats. Just like what we did with the order of flats, we can use the order of sharps. We can also use the order of flats to determine that. So let's take for example, B flat. So you've been given two flats. You're not sure what key it is. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the order of flats and count two flats, right? Which is one, two now remember with the order of sharps we went from this you would go to two steps forward but with the order of flats you don't go two steps forward what you do is you go two uh, one step backwards so two flats given it, uh, in the key signature count the two flats on the order of flats which is better ends and down goes charles's father so if you count two flats that's one two and then from this second flat you move one step back and that will take you back to a B flat. So B flat major uh, um, key will be the key that has two flats. So the same thing, let's do six flats. So count six flats, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then move one step back, you will land on G flat. And then G flat major scale will be the key that has um, six flats. So that's basically the key signatures for for, for flats. So I want you to revise these, um, look at how they are written in the in, in the treble clef and how they are written in the in the, in the bass clef, right? And um, yeah, and then I'll come back quickly and we will discuss about the work that I want you to complete on this, uh, on this topic for trials. And then I'll come in another video, a separate video, which will be the part two for trides and seventh chords. But in this part two, I'll then look at other types of chords like diminished um, and seventh. I'll start with the seventh chords and I'll go on to the diminished, uh, diminished chords. Okay, so yes, uh, let's go and, uh, and revise this. And then I'll give you guys a homework at the end of this. So this is the end of the first part of the triads and seventh chords topic. I'll come back again in another video where I will discuss diminished chords and augmented chords. And then another video as well where I will discuss seventh chords and their inversions. So what I want you to do now is to go to the description box and uh, get instructions on how you can access the worksheet that I've created for this first part of, of the topic. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button for all the content that I'll be creating in the future. So thank you very much.